<laughs> oh. oh, it's working. Oh, damn. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. I got no fridge art to hold me down. Uh, okay, so <laughs> welcome to fridge art. Welcome yeah. to artist art. <laughs> I think we still call it fridge art. Yeah, we call it's it. It's been a while, um, and I haven't even submitted it in the last two, maybe three. Yeah. I gotta get back on doing that thing. We were listening to the Pinocchio song. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Right. It just kind of happened, and we had to watch the whole video, and it was really racist. Yeah, a lot of those early Disney ones are. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Andrew Radek. And I'm Kristen Plesko. So, today, we are going to talk about the type of mentality you need to have to be a successful illustrator. Yeah. And we're more or less, I don't want to say shit on, but we're more <laughs> or less going to talk about uh, how to not do things. Yeah. How to not be that person. And um, how to best move through the normal process that people have to go through when they're learning something, especially something visual. I mean, like, if you're learning anything, it's kind of the same thing. So, uh, what would you say is the type of person you don't want to be, Kristen? An ass hat. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, you know, uh, I don't want to be the kind of... I think the worst person for me, personally, are the people that don't recognize that critiques are helping you. Mm. And then they just kind of explode. Or they say, like, it's just my style. And it's like, well, your style is bad. I'm sorry. You know, no, it, your style, basically style is shorthand for your drawing habits. Yeah. Like, Andrea and I have, have different drawing habits, and you can tell our artwork apart mm-hmm. based on our stark minds. Just like you can do it with pretty much, you know, any established artist. I think it's usually okay. A style isn't necessarily good or bad. It's like your habit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would rather... But- Personally, the the way I would rather stuff comes about because I mean we both run into a lot of people where they have basic like abstract art type of thing, but they also don't really know what they're doing. So um, the thing, okay, let's have a brief a brief art history about surrealism and realism. So for a while, I mean there was like impressionism and Roman uh, romanticism and everything in art, right? Romanticism came first. Oh, the Roman- wait, no shit. Anyways, uh. the, those, it, it, was a, it was a period of having incredibly realistic, but still kind of artsy flourishes to it. I and think it you're went, thinking of like, a, what was it, Baroque was super realistic, right? Possibly. Um, but then people got really kind of fed up with things having to be super realistic, and this is a span of 100 years later or so, and it kind of became surrealism. You well, know, it, it, well, it went to of, Rococo first. And yeah, then, uh, I've been out of I've been out of school for a little bit, so my art history, <laughs> like art history, may or may not be the class I really hate. Because because uh, impressionism started in like the uh, I think the mid eighteen hundreds, and yeah, uh, and and of course there's also like, like sublime eighteen and there's uh, to like eighteen fifty ish. Yeah, I'm yeah. probably super off on the but date, like we but we went to the Baroque art was museum. in like the seventeen hundreds. Basically, things were super realistic. And then people got sick of art being judged on how super realistic something was, and we're not even going to talk about camera obscura. So then it be it started to swing more into a type of feeling and abstracting from that. But a lot of like the really good abstract artists went into a super realistic period. They got fed up that that's all that art was, and then they made the statement of surrealism of appealing more to certain types of emotions and abstracting from life. And that's the type of abstract art I do actually really like. Like, that type of stuff. So, like, actual surrealism, like, um... Well, like not, probably not so much surrealism. Probably more, like, just abstract. I guess. I'm, I'm also not, just... Not hyper-realistic. Because surrealism is a specific subset. See? It is, that's true. I really liked art history. Well, <laughs> school me, because I'm probably talking on my ass. But it's well, just, I do know... The education thing is right, though. Like, no. people did get fed up and... Yeah, they got fed up with it, and then they they focused on it not representing what it's supposed to. And it, like, using abstract concepts and forms to represent an emotional bond, or it has a deeper story to it. But those people, that's where that comes from. But nowadays, what I'm trying to get to is that those people had to go through the entire range of learning how to draw correctly. I don't say correctly, but learning how to draw realistically as possible before abstracting from it. Yes. And that's the type of people that I would trust... To make those types of, of statements more accurately. They know how to see the world, they know how to interpret the world, and then they know how to do their version of interpreting the world. Yeah, so if you can draw an outside. orange realistically, you can probably figure out how to draw it other ways. Right. So, so 
like how I, I have nesting birds outside that they see the cats in the windows and then they try to attack the windows and the cats love it because the cats just want to attack the birds. But anyways, so, and this is more of a personal opinion. We don't try to do personal opinions on these types of things, typically. But well, I'm sure we'll upset some people. Oh, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> a lot of the times, the types of people that I see that go into sort of abstract and surrealist shit now... They do it because they're trying to make a statement they don't quite understand. And for me, it seems <laughs> it seems very apparent that, that, you know, if you, like, for example, there's an exhibit around here in Roanoke where a woman literally rolled diapers in mud. <laughs> and that is so <laughs> aggravating to me. Like, there's, there's not anything. What is to come out of that? What is the fucking statement out of that? Maybe we just don't get it, but... Well, we're definitely more business-minded artists than, like, I would say what your stereotypical fine artist is. But those type of people, like... like... (sighs) Yeah. Of course, like, it's always our opinion. And, of course, like, and and remember, it's okay, even if you have an opinion of, like, the old masters and stuff, that's still okay. You're allowed to have an opinion. As long as it's educated and you know what you're talking about. Like, you can't just say, well, it's all shit. Well, it's You know, you can't say that, but... A lot of the people that do that kind of surreal stuff now... They tend to just kind of bulldoze their way. They're like, oh, well, this is as best as... I'm, I'm making an artistic statement right now. It's on notebook paper, and I used colored pencils. And, you know, I drew it in, in history class, and some of my notes are in the corner, but it's really against the man, you know? It's just like, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Then it has the little me. S, the 90s S. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It has a name to it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I can't called. remember what it's called either. It's like a graffiti or something weird. If you're looking to get into fantasy art and stuff... I don't want to say it's a trapping just to get really comfortable with making an edgy statement that you don't understand, and then you kind of feed off of other people who don't want to look like idiots because oh they don't understand it either. Like the deviant art thing, like the, like like the ones where you see and it's like, I'm okay, and it's like a like a, a yeah fuck a that sticker noise. over their mouth and it says I'm okay, but they're really crying. I think those are the dumbest things because it's not that- it's not a deep emotion. It's just such a superficial. It would be a deeper easy... emotion if she didn't fill her entire gallery with it. Like, she does. That's literally her. I think you can do that. things a lot better. There are other can... ways to sell em, to tell emotion than giant anime eyes. And, yeah, and, and you and can a, you I'm can okay. appease an, an angsty teenage crowd all you want. I mean, it, you just yeah. it feel dark and brooding, and, and there yeah. you go. Humans but... are smarter than you think, and you can use a lot of symbolism. Yes, and people will interpret it different ways, but in general, like you know. I don't know. Just but we both like come that. from a background of, of trying to go down that realistic road type of thing. Or, you know, like, we're we're representing forms that people can tell what they are by looking at them instead of just triangles. This big triangle yeah. and these two small triangles represent a family in the modern age, and also the dad is not home a lot. Like, it's, it's course, just stupid shit like that. You know, it's, and, it's, and, of course, there is stuff like constructivism, which well, was in the 1910s and 20s. I don't which was a Which was a shit. Russian... Well, basically... They were simplifying down things to its, like, you know, it was nice for the, the propaganda posters are, are really fantastic for the graphic design, mm-hmm. so sometimes the abstractions can be appreciated. Like, I personally really like constructivism. Yeah, you like and, constructivism, I, I can't. And if you look up constructivism, it's basically that square shit. They even had, like, a child book, a, a, a children's book that told the story of, like, some squares, some black squares and red circles, and it's really interesting how they can you show can, a story. You can look at the video game Thomas Was Alone. That's also a fantastic way to sound, kind of show that. It's literally just... It, oh, yeah, it's like a rectangle. It's... Yeah, it's just a rectangle, but it's, like, really emotionally deep. Yeah, so you it's can do things so. with it. it. It really depends. And, of course, and of course, everyone's opinion is different. There are things usually to appreciate. But, in general, those constructivist artists knew what the hell they were doing. Yes. They knew composition. They, they, ha- they could Basically, paint. There's, a, there's a quick route to try and get instant artistic gratification, which is just make up some sort of emotional bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> And then just stand behind it like, okay, the story I tell all the time is uh, I went to college initially for art at Western Illinois University, and it doesn't have an art program. It has, like, you could major in art when most of the colleges you can major in graphic design, illustration, etc. So um, I majored in art for one semester, and we had this guy that he was just, just had the biggest thumb up his ass just the entire fucking time smelling his own shit. And he comes in with a with a shit brown square on a slightly larger panel, and he just like tosses it like haughtily, hoitily, to haughtily. his haughtily to his <laughs> desk, and um, he's like, "This is my representation of the universe. 
And everybody lost their mind over it. They loved it so fucking much. It was the most aggravating thing. And that was like half the reason I fucking left that college. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. I cannot do this. So That's great. I... All, the other half was the bus driver. You don't want to... I would say take your, take your artistic progression at where you want it to be. And don't get stuck off on a bus stop like, oh, my mom really liked this this angsty Inuyasha drawing I did, so that's all I'm ever going to do for the rest of my life. Like, that that's basically the point I'm trying to make, is, like, you can get that type of instant gratification because you can trick people into thinking there's more of an actual meaning than there is. You can watch the movie Art School Confidential. It's a fantastic job talking about it. I don't think I actually see it. You that. should. It's a comedy, and also a murder mystery. Good. But, but <laughs> basically, a cop goes into art school, and he's just like, whatever, I just drew a truck, and they're like, it's like... It's like how people move through life, you know, and I really understand. He's like, no, it's just a truck. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. And he ends up being, like, the best person in the art school, even though he's just talking out of his ass. It's a, it's a fantastic movie. Right. But I, we're talking specifically illustrators. Yeah. All right? Like, illustration you is do not fine, fine art. Yeah, it's true. It, it, I mean, there are overlaps, but... Illustration, I would say, is best described as, like, you fine art company. plus a business degree. More or less. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, you, you need to know a lot of business sense about your work. Uh, another thing that, that we had to deal with a lot, or at least I had to deal with, because you, you have more of a graphic design background mm-hmm. and you only know of the illustrators in your class because they're super hoity and annoying. Um, yeah, there, there is some of that. <laughs> there's, a se- there's a separate thing about if I, oh, I go to uh, the, the California Design or School of Art and Design. I paid $100,000 for my degree. Yeah. And now I don't I have do a job. I the same work you do, and it cost me a fraction of what you did. So, uh, <laughs> Not saying... Basically, no. like, a lot of our colleagues... I have a feeling we're, 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 we're putting our opinions really deep into we this. Are. So please, like, realize this is an opinion piece, and you don't have to I also to actually... realize we've had to deal with a number of other artists that they come up to you. They're like, oh, I don't know how you did this. I don't, you know, I don't paint, and I don't practice or anything, but then, like, my mom really likes this drawing, and... The art world is too harsh for me, and I don't want to show any of my paintings. Because everybody's going to steal them, and you, you can't oh, say God, anything, yeah, because it's it's such a cacophony of just crazy bullshit, just all mixed in. It's like a it's like a rose bud, just where everything <laughs> just kind of overlaps each other. It's a... Uh, yeah, if you think that people are going to steal your art willy-nilly, you're probably not very good. And I'm, well, I'm saying this because, that before. yeah, and, and, and I'm saying this one from experience, like I was this, I, I'm scared of that when I was younger of course. until I realized. And also like the thing is like, like what Andrea was mentioning about like the Inuyasha fan art, fan art isn't like a problem at all, but the fan art I have an issue with is when it's just a headshot or it's just the character and it has nothing to do with the story, that, it has nothing to do else. with the emotion. I know, but that's, you can, you can use... Your skills as an artist that yeah, you learned classically. Yeah, but we're talking to, about mentality. Oh, mentality. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Not, not what should go into the perfect fan art. Like, that's something else. But... Damn it. <laughs> basically, <laughs> we see a lot of... A lot of the people that I talk to where they're just getting started or they're trying to, to get a leg up or they're trying to get into it. I'll take, for example, I, I do this art every now and then. <laughs> I do this uh, selling thing downtown in Roanoke where... Um, you know, it, it's nice to just kind of sit there for a few hours on a Sunday, chat with people, sell some stuff. It, it's fairly laid back. Um, but the last time I went there, there was a guy that is obviously skilled. He's obviously sort of starting up. Like, you can see he has some issues with, like, textures and his digital work. And it, it's very obvious it's digital and it, some of similar compositions and stuff like that. He has an idea that he keeps hitting. Um, but he's, he's not bad. Mm-hmm. And he's obviously trying. And, you know, he's probably about my age, maybe a couple years younger. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I've never done a convention like this before. And uh, I'm really nervous if my stuff's going to sell at all. And he, he printed up these these price tag things. Like, his, none of his work had any price tag on it. And I'm like, do you have price tags for your stuff? Because you should really have your price tags on it. I, I literally, I'm like, next time, come with something on both sides of your table so you can set it up Probably so that people will look yeah. at it and then kind of bring in because people are dumb. They will just sweep right over something that's flat and never look at it. Yeah. And that's true. It, there's a lot of psychology that goes into, like, setting up your table and stuff and all that. But he was just like, oh, you know, my prices seem too big, so I just didn't put them out. I'm like, just put them out. Just put them out. But any time that you can cut out any sort of middleman for people from them giving you their money is the easiest thing. If they have to ask, you're already going to lose, like, 60% of your customers because they're like, yeah, I would ask, but I don't feel like asking, and I'm just going to leave. Like, it's, it's ridiculous how lazy people are. But... <laughs> 
Is it like he had he had no idea how to market his stuff, how to bring his stuff out there, and this was his first one, and he was going to base like all of his success on how he did Mother's Day, and we got such shitty customers that like nobody really made that much money. Yeah, like it's you you can't you can't be you you have to understand that when you make a mistake or when something doesn't go your way, you don't just give up. Yeah. Just based on that, you basically just learn from it. And you say, okay, well, what could I have possibly done wrong? Like, I usually take notes after each convention, mm. and I have a notebook that I write down, okay, what sold well? What didn't? You know, what did I learn from customers? And, like, oftentimes I'll ask customers, like, oh, what are you looking for? And stuff, if they if they said, oh, man, I really wish you had this. Mm-hmm. Or why don't you have this, you know? or yeah. you know, I pulled people about what type of playmat they would want to see for me and got some good answers and stuff out of yeah. that. Yeah, and that's honestly, you know... Each, each convention is a learning experience, and each one is different. So if you don't do well at one, there's no reason that you couldn't do well at another one, for example. So one of the first conventions that I did was WizCon back in, I want to say, 2008. WizCon. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in college at the time, and I just quit my job, and I really, really needed money. But I had, like, 400 bucks in my account, and I spent 275 of that on prints that I got at Office Max. And really cheap frames. Dun, dun, dun. Long story short, I didn't sell anything. I think I may have sold one commission. It was definitely by a guy that felt sorry for me. And then, like, one of the guys, like, one of the people I was there with, like, he didn't even have a table. He's like, can I have $20 as well? I'm also an artist. And the guy was, like, told him more or less to fuck off in, like, nice terms. Like, oh, well, I'm gonna give it to her, because she's been here all day and, and stuff. And I, more or less, I sat next to a guy that shot lightning through glass. Or, like, resin. And it was super fucking red. Oh, the Do you Lich- wanna... Lichtenberg figures or whatever they call them? It literally was like a, a square piece of glass, and he had like yeah. an awl on the top, and he like he tapped it with a hammer, and it shot lightning through yeah. it. Yeah, I think it's uh, Lichtenberg. Probably. Yeah. It was fucking phenomenal, but I had to be next to that guy. There were two tables, the fucking lightning guy, and then <laughs> me, and I didn't sell anything. And like, I got super depressed after that. I'm like, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to be able to get out there. And, you know, nobody likes my shit or anything like that. And my friends are like, no, you know, it was just the wrong type of thing. It's not really a buying convention, which I wish they would have told me before. But well, I guess unless you have little resin lightning things. Yeah, unless you can fucking shoot lightning through something. Like, ugh, what the? What was the worst person to be in? Very they they sell them online thing. and they're super cool. They yeah. are. They're really awesome. <laughs> but, but see, like, that's something to, like, write down and stuff. Like... Like, if you see Next other artists... Next time, shoot lightning Well, like, <laughs> like, like, I was looking, like, whenever I was at, a, like, a convention, like, sometimes I see better stands artists had set up, and I, I'd either ask them to take a picture, or I'd just write down quickly, like, what it was that I liked about the stand, like, in that mm-hmm. I might have seen... Like, some people have really neat displays, you know? Okay, let, let's talk about mentality. Oh, sorry, mentality. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, the mentality is, like, that... So, okay, what do you think is the correct mentality to go into these? Um, I guess don't expect anything. Expect to make no, mistakes. That, oh, that's okay. depressing. <laughs> uh, I would say that the, the right mentality to go into, if you're trying to be an artist and an illustrator, is you have to understand it's a process. And you have to understand that you're going to put out stuff you don't like. And you're going to consistently put out stuff you don't like. And the vision between what you have in your head and what you put on paper is probably never going to line up. Even though you get farther along... That also sounds depressing, yeah. but keep with me. So... <laughs> Like, the farther along you get, the closer it gets to that. But you have to understand that you're not stuck at the same level forever. I mean, your brain is only going to absorb so many things at so many times. You have to keep practicing and you have to keep working at it. And the the adage that if you put, what, 10,000 hours, you get put 10,000 sketchbooks, whatever the fuck it is, Mm -hmm. uh, down, that's how much you need before you start being any good. And a lot of people think that they start off and they're instantly going to be good. Or, you know, like, oh, my mom was a, a drawer, and my dad was a wardrobe. I can be a great drawer, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you my can't... My mom was a test. She wasn't a... Uh, my mom is a secretary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, you can't, you can't expect that you're going to be fantastic. But you have to understand that it gets better. Yeah, no, that's much better. Yeah, so... Yeah, sorry, sorry my advice wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you... you you want to be malleable. I would say it will probably be the most the most helpful thing you can be when you're starting off. Don't don't take anything too seriously. Yes. Don't get frustrated that somebody critiques your work because if they didn't if they didn't care about where you were at at that time, they wouldn't critique it. They they want even if it's a shitty critique, even if it's like uh, it could be better. That person at least 
it recognizes that there is something that you could work on, even though they don't understand what it is. I, I always ask them, like, well, what it? Yeah, what I, I tend to try and ask them as Yeah, and that's well. also a good way to do it. Instead of being upset about someone saying, oh, it's not perfect, like, don't be embarrassed. Like, like, well, like trust me, even stuff I do now, like, yeah. I look at them like, oh. You just get to be different <laughs> levels of embarrassed or ashamed of your work as it goes on. It gets, like I said, it gets closer the farther you go mm-hmm. on, but... Like, I started when I was 19. I started drawing from more or less scratch. From doing those fucking graffiti S's or whatever in my sketchbook about 10 years ago. And, like, I, I felt really you awful. You were doing those when you were 19? Yeah. No, I literally couldn't draw. I literally wasn't doing jack shit. Shit? Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. And I've, I've worked really was, fast to get as, as Listen to as Andrea. She would, she would actually remember. Andrea has a lot of, of relevant, pertinent... Uh, yeah, she's, she's like a, like a vampire with a memory... Yeah. To last a lifetime. Well, it's I was 19 when I started, so I remember what it was like. And it's like, you also have to remember that when you look at your own pieces, um, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a real thing. And if you look it up, it's a fantastic thing. Basically, you cannot realize that you are shitty. That's, that's <laughs> what it is. It's like, you can't recognize your own crapulence without being slightly farther than you are. So if you go into it realizing, like, you know, if you see something that's like, wow, this is really good, don't ever make those those statements like, wow, I don't have to learn how to draw faces anymore, I'm pretty much the best. Because you'll look at it a year from then and wonder what drugs you were on. Because it won't look anything like you remember it. Especially if you start at 19 so you can see progress a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's, uh, it's fantastic going back on old sketchbooks and just, I have no idea what the fuck I was thinking. My progress was much more uh, more gradual, but I started when I was earlier. Yeah. So so I I, was, I started from, like, drawing terrifying clowns to, to dinosaurs. Fish and to, all sorts of shit. Yeah. I mean, I probably had some... I, I think I was on some drugs when I was drawing that, but I was well, also six. But you remember you look at them now, and they don't look they don't look like you remember them. And that's that Dunning Kruger effect. It's true. It's but sometimes people you use can it see as good a, things. No, I mean know. people people use it as an insult, but it literally is a thing that happens. Yeah. And the way that you perceive the world changes as yeah. you get farther along. And I, I think that the best way to describe it now is like I when I look around, I see detail in everything to a point where it's annoying. And it's kind of like having binoculars on just all the time, and you're just constantly looking at tiny fucking details, and yeah. it's really aggravating. Yeah, like, looking at type. Like, you can't just read anymore. Yeah. You just look at the type, and you're like, ah, uh, you know, and if it's not current correct, you're like, why is the A and the Y so far apart? Your that brain develops, and it, it, it develops to gear towards that. Yeah. And you have to realize that, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bold statement, talent is horseshit. <gasps> you know, or not talent, um, but like... But my mom said I had so much. It, natural, <laughs> natural born talent. There we go. Oh, she was born to do this type of thing is such a crock of horseshit. It really is. Like, and basically, I mean, at best, you have skills that you're sort of taught. So, like, you can be disciplined, you can be observant, that type of thing. And that can apply to a number of different jobs you choose. Yeah. But, you know, I, being naturally talented. So, like, for example, oh, you know, my mom draws, so I'll be a really good drawer, too. And... Yeah, the only time that works is like if if you're if you're breeding like the master race of like no like like, like athletes or something. So your parents are both powerful. So obviously <laughs> you're you born would... with a finger callus already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I it doesn't it doesn't apply with skills as much as like well my mom has blonde hair. So if she wants a, a blonde baby, I don't, I, know what I don't even know what I'm talking. You know no, what, what I know. I'm talking about. You can't expect your, you to be good at something just because your parents were. Yes. There we go. So <laughs> just just understand that you are going to have to change a lot, and if you don't hold anything sacred, then you could move through that a lot faster than other people. Because most people, they get to a point, they see something, they're like, "Wow, I'm really good at drawing this dragon," and then they'll just draw the same dragon just over and over and over again. I might have. Yeah, and so did I. And <laughs> yeah, they might just draw the same dragon over and over again, same pose and everything, until eventually they think that they can't do any better than that. Because they will eventually realize that, wow, I'm actually not that great. Or they just do that same thing forever. And you'll you'll find a number of very stubborn, older people that, you know, they they started drawing flowers on a, <laughs> on a whiteboard... You know, like, scribbling flowers on there, like, this is art as it stands. Like, don't ever go into it with that. Like, any time that you think you're better than somebody else, you're fucking wrong. Just all the time. Yeah, air horns sounding yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't be the person where, like, even though we had the rant about surrealism, <laughs> don't be the person where you think you're above that. And I mostly rag on that because I don't understand it. 
because yeah, I'm a very visually drawn, driven artist, and yeah, and obviously there's a lot of people who have success with that. Square. Well, that's so. because they they dupe people into thinking there's a meaning to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, like I'm I personally so like of- constructivism, but only for certain things. And Andrea knows what those certain things are. Yeah. It's it's because I'm insane. Um, but <laughs> it's because I I'm insane and I like typography and and weird shit. But basically, like it, it's always your opinion. Art is so, so subjective that there's not really like. I well, mean, okay, the, the basis of art, yeah. from where it starts, is art is a collection of symbols. Yeah. All right? You are representing your idea to somebody else. You want to say, hey, I'm thinking of a dragon beating up a griffin, and then you draw a picture of a dragon beating up a griffin, and you don't draw a picture of two circles and then a hot dog in between them. <laughs> I mean, if you want, if that's what you want, that's what you do. But what if do. you just want the emotion of the dragon fighting the griffin, Andrea. Well, then you I mean, can just you can just do the hot track like everybody else does, and then pretend like your work is more meaning just, than it just does. Just uh, pollock it up and just. I've, at this <laughs> at this Roanoke art group, or not art group thing. Uh, at this Roanoke uh, pop up art market, uh, there was a guy this time, and one of the guys was going around saying that he was the best friend of Dali, Salvador Dali. And he was wearing a red Hawaiian shirt with white flowers, and then a black and white flannel pajama pants. And then he also had, like, like another beaches. shirt. He just, he looked like a crazy man, all right? <laughs> and he, he went to this one guy who was drawing these sort of, like, noodle people. They were just, like, like kind of crudely drawn people, but then, like, the lines were shaded, like they were round. And he's like, this man is gonna be the next, you know, master artist. And... It, that, that's another thing to talk to is like a lot of the well, no, I'm serious. Like a lot of the times <laughs> just, you're gonna you're gonna be in school and then you're gonna have a teacher who only talks about somebody else, and that's happened with every single one of the classes I've gone I to that. because I I happen to get matched with the people that are just much farther along on their progress than I am, and the teacher just just I, it, it happens so much. It's in high frustrating. School. It, like, it's frustrating, and you want to give up because you feel like the teacher doesn't see something in you. Yeah. You can just do what I do and then be fueled by revenge and vengeance the entire time. Yeah. Because, like, every time that I get somebody like, dude, have you met him? He's the next master artist. And I'm just like, I am going to kick your ass academically and financially. You don't even fucking know. Uh, We we had that in high school because, like, the teacher, the teacher we had, there was, like, one girl that did blown up paintings of, like, cell phone pictures. So, as you can tell, I mean, I mean, she, she had a technical skill at mixing paint. And, like, there are a lot of, <laughs> which is actually harder than it sounds. It, it, like, like yeah, mixing oil paint paints is, is actually, is actually a, a skill that's really good. But, like, the problem was that she would only care about this one artist and her shitty giant cell phone paintings that really had no meaning. They were just cell phone paintings. There's nothing, like, really interesting about them. Don't, and, ever, like, don't ever feel like where you come from or where you are situated in has any bearing on how good of an artist you can be. Yeah. If you don't go to college... And you want to do, you want to stay at home and you want to learn how to do various things. Don't ever think that you're not good enough to compete with people that go to college for it. Yeah. And, and especially teachers who just blow the smoke up somebody else's ass. The best that they're doing is giving that other person a complex that they feel like they have to overachieve. Yeah. And they tend to fucking them up. The best teachers more than not. are either like positive about a lot of things or positive about nothing. Yeah, and that and that way they give you the most honest critique, and I probably prefer the latter. But also teachers that are positive, like, oh man, you should, because I had one, and that's actually the reason why I started digital art is because I had a teacher who, after that that shitlord teacher, she was positive about everything. She was like, all my students are so talented, mm-hmm. you know. I really like how you're doing this, and she'd go over here and like to the other student, go like, oh, that's really great, you know. I, I'd love to see you do more of that, and that's something that's really important. Yeah, and uh, you know, and there's not, I I think yeah. I. I can't think of a single teacher I had where they didn't kind of shit on me in that exact way. It was literally every single class I had had some sort of really talented person. So I was never given any of that type of attention. That it was, was awful. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's depressing and it's frustrating. And, you know, like, my favorite thing is I, I talked to my, my, um, my illustration teacher. And he was asking me, because at that point I was only two years into drawing. So I was mm-hmm. still pretty shitty. And he was like, so what do you want to do with your degree when you're done? Like, what's the, what's your ideal? And I'm like, well, you know, I want to, I want to paint monsters and stuff for Magic the Gathering. And, uh, like, he's like, what type of art style do you want to have? And I'm like, well, I want it to be sort of a mix of, I think, Todd Lockwood and, um, yeah, Robert Robert Bateman. (laughs) Natural Worlds, Robert Bateman, that's one of my favorite books. And he does, they're very photorealistic, just 
animal paintings, more or less. And my teacher told me, he's like, well, you, you think you're aiming pretty high there, huh? <laughs> like, he's like, don't you think you're aiming a little high? Maybe you should try something like scientific illustration. It's a lot easier to get into. And it's the most, you know, sack, you know, punch in the gut that you can get. It, yeah. But you have to understand, like, even if nobody believes you, I mean, if you keep to it and you keep working your ass off, you can't not succeed, I guess. Just don't ever give in to just like, oh, I guess I'll just stop and play video games all day. Like, you learn, you have to give a good, a good try. And yeah. You have to literally more or less dedicate yourself to yeah. it. Yeah. And also the mentality is, speaking of video games, I used to play them all the time and I found I became, became a much better artist when I started playing them a lot less. <laughs> because, uh, because instead of pay- playing a game for 20 hours a week, I started playing it for like maybe like three. Also, I have tendinitis, so it's it's hard for me to do that. But I found that after doing that, and I, I remember hearing a podcast, another artist said, play video games? Give it up. You can only <laughs> choose one. And he's not entirely wrong. You can, it, it's, if you want to be good at something, you really do have to dedicate a lot yeah. of that time. Doesn't mean you have to give up all your other pleasures and stuff. No, but no. You have to really I still focus. play video games. I still oh yeah, same, 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 same here. Shit. Like, Kayaking? Yeah, I mean, there's still other things. I still play some video games, but I definitely don't play it nearly to the extent no. that I used to. And, no, it's, uh, no, I would agree. It's like, And we run across that a lot. It's like, people are like, oh, I'd be really good if I just practiced. It's like, that yeah. doesn't mean anything. And you have to understand, practicing is literally like everything. the new Call of Duty. It's, it's like, like, I oh. could own, it's, it's more like saying, I would own a nice car if I had more money. Yeah, yeah. well, don't we all? You know, like. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd take that money. And not it. buy a car with it. Yeah, I didn't mess with it. Whatever. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, buy myself you, ten ice you more or less have to go into it being resilient. That's probably being dedicated and resilient are probably the two most most things that you need. Yeah. You just, if you stick to it, you have to understand you are going to have to go through all the fucking phases of being shitty to being slightly less shitty to being that your friends say that you're good, to being that your mom says you're really good, to realizing you're still pretty shitty, and then keep going. <gasps> did I oh. lying? I'm not lying. My mom said I was good before my friends did. My parents never say I'm good. So, oh, well, my parents are crappy. So, <laughs> oh, my mom said it because I because I copied. Well, the only thing. to her friend she says I'm good. She doesn't say it to me. The fuck. Well. well we, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a whole other can of worms, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you also might start with your mom first. Not your dad. Your dad, you have to actually earn his love. No, <laughs> No, just whatever. Don't rely on other people to, to kind of feel it along, and just know that if you keep at it and just work your ass off. Another thing is, like, always try new things when you're drawing. Yeah. If you do the exact same thing that you're always doing, you're only going to get to the exact same results. Also, you'll be bored. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's when a lot of people drop out of that, too. Yeah. But if you try and you're like, hey, I want to try doing this style this time. Hmm, I'm going to try using just bright blue instead of black to shade. You know, like, you have to try these little experiments to get a better understanding of how to do things. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like lighting up a giant ball. Like, let's, let's imagine we have a giant ball and it's full of lights. And you, like, kind of start at the bottom and you have to kind of spread it out. And then it'll keep spreading around before you get, Are like, you the whole picture. Are you talking about, like... I'm talking about a whole picture. You're talking about, like, a light bright? Kind of. Are they old enough to know what a light bright is? I'm not talking about a light bright. Okay. It wasn't a circle, it was a square. Anyways, I'm just saying there's an entry point. <laughs> it also involved pegs, but... There's an entry point, mm-hmm. and if you just kind of spread it around, that you can cover more ground and get to things faster. Sounds like a Kristen thing to say. I'm, I'm trying, I'm wrapping my head around no, this. No, Kristen thing to say is start talking about your dad randomly. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I just... Just don't don't ever feel like you're inhibited by by where you come from, or any social standing, any any shit like that. Just just do the best you can, and understand that. I mean, compared to other things like like writing, writing is is kind of fucked up in the way, not not in the way you're thinking. Like it's the professional world of writing is is much more kind of you have to know somebody. You have to get in with somebody else. It's much more about networking and it's like an oligarchy of our, of writers. And... It's weird. It's <sighs> like that's why I kind of stopped doing that. Like I haven't stopped writing. I just I stopped kind of trying to apply to that type of stuff because it's uh, we were talking about the the World Poetry Association, which has a thing that if you pay a thousand dollars, you can get an award that says you're a Golden Poet of the Year. And that type of thing, like that type of crazy <laughs> shit happens. It's much more straightforward with art. But... Yeah, because and luckily with art, it's a uh... 
man or woman, there really is no like or or not or in between or any anything really probably alien or dog if you were. <laughs> like it doesn't matter as it's long an as you're good. At, yeah, I mean as long as you're good or as long as you you can always have the skill. It's not really a gender exclusive thing. Like I know I will probably not be able to lift as many weights as a man. <laughs> Just of, of, of similar, you know, like, like if I had to lift weights and I wanted to be a professional bodybuilder. Anyways. You know, but, but at least with the mentality is, like, that's one thing I do. Your like artwork art. represents you better than you can ever represent yourself. Yeah, there we go. So that is the nice thing about art. It's like, it doesn't fucking matter how old you are or where you come from. If you want to start doing this now when you're, like, 50 years old and you want to start being an artist... Fucking go for it. Or if you're two years old and listening to this podcast, get started. If you're two years old, get wrecked. I don't know why your mom let you on the computer this early, and you really shouldn't be here because the rest of our stuff is way more laced with curse words than I'd like to admit. But no, I mean it doesn't. It doesn't matter who you are. It's just the the result that you put forth represents yourself best. And then yeah. also, if you can just be dependable. And just do your shit on time. It's like the trifecta that everybody needs. Because you'll always run into... Art directors run into a lot of artists where they just have their head up their ass. And they don't want to do a deadline because they're they're too busy doing... You know, I'm sorry. Minecraft. Yeah, I'm too busy <laughs> doing Minecraft to finish this thing. Like, they... If you ever meet an art director, just ask them for some wacky stories. They always have stories of just artists being the worst fucking people in the world. Because some of them are. Yeah. People they, are shitty. Like, that's... But then my aunt, my aunt was telling me, she's like, oh, I found out that most artists, to be successful, need to have some sort of mental disability. That's what she fucking told me. I'm like, what? well, you do have to be very, very resilient and, and very... Uh, I think we all, like, enjoy being beaten down and built back up. It, it's a drive <laughs> thing. It, it's something with, like, you have to be very invested in yourself to continue your drive or something like that. Like, I've know. noticed that artists tend to be more expressive and she also they then, tend to be more honest with their feelings. Yeah, well, so, that's I her mean, bag, is expressing yourself. Well, yeah, but I mean, in like... squares and circles. Maybe, maybe we don't necessarily have more <laughs> mental disorders than the general population. We just express them. Oh, more. everybody has a, a whole bag of mental don't disorders. Say that. No, that's generally accepted in psychology. So that everybody is a culmination of, like three to five different mental disorders, and it's only if you let one rule your life that you're actually labeled with it. Serious. No! Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> well, we have gone if away. One, or if it, if it takes over you. Well, we've gone on for a while. But yeah. J- just, if you guys have any questions, refrigeratepodcast at gmail.com. If you ever need to contact us about advice for stuff, you can also contact us through there. Yeah. Even though I haven't checked in in like a month now. And but. thanks for listening to our opinion. Remember that... Our, our word isn't necessarily law, but we have experience and, Well, people you know. people get defensive because it feels like a personal attack that they're not as good as we are. That's what people have told me in the past. And it's huh. not that. It's like, we see the, the, the level that they're at, and they can't really hide anything from us because we've been there. I mean, we know where they're at. We know we what they're doing. Right so they're like, <laughs> oh, it was an artistic decision to put all of her hands into her ass cheeks behind her back. Like, we know what they're doing. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, we, we're not saying... We're saying it... Uh, it's tough love, I guess. It's not really a... Uh... If you just get ass pats the entire way, you're going to inflate your ego to a point you're never going to improve, and then you're just going to give up at one point. Just just be really down to earth and be really honest with yourself and realize everything is it's temporary where you're at. Yeah. You can't give up, basically. Everything's temporary, even life. Yep. <laughs> God, we get in on even, that, dude. Even the space between when this apartment floods, like yep. we found out today. Kristen doesn't live here anymore, and then she came back saying that she doesn't want to live here anymore, or she doesn't want to come back, because her current apartment is really shitty, uh, because it she is. was going to get floods, and then we went to lunch, and then it flooded <laughs> when we came back. Yeah, because Andrew kept saying, oh, it hasn't flooded, and of course, like, today, it We literally flood. got, like, two inches of rain in, like, a half hour. I do it not regret nuts. leaving, because then my apartment would have been flooded again, and I would have been... too, which I don't understand. I don't understand anything. I don't understand how there's gun shootings in my neighborhood, but, you know. I understand how that happens, because you live in a shitty neighborhood with a lot of drugs and gangs. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a gang. When a group of people at a house all hang out there all the time. I do see a lot of men at a certain house, and they're men I don't recognize as living there. Yeah. And that makes me highly suspicious, and the police always park on our neighborhood. (laughs) And they always watch people. It's good. It's good. I have an exciting life. It's real good. But I live yeah. in a slum. No. Just, <laughs> just understand that, I mean, if you want something and you work hard enough, that you will get there. 
You just yeah. can't give up, and then you just can't get complacent with yourself. Never give up. Never surrender. And it just, I, I laugh every single fucking time. Somebody's like, well, I'm really good with hands. Actually, my, my favorite fucking thing is somebody will come up to me and they're like, actually, I'm also a really good artist. I just don't draw very often. Hands down, there are probably exactly the type of artists you think they are, where they're just really anyone, shitty. Yeah, I've never met anyone it's like, like that who's good. last weekend. Where they're just like, oh, I'm actually a really good artist. Are you? What are your drawings? Uh, I don't draw yet. I r- there was a guy who sat next to me for a long fucking time asking me, like, how do I get into writing, the professional writing business? I'm like, dude, I literally gave up on that and became an illustrator instead. <laughs> I don't know. So, should I... He's like, I need to hire myself an agent. And I'm like, well, good fucking luck with that, because you have to apply to an agent, and you don't just fucking hire them. Air horn noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's... I mean, if you become an illustrator, just get ready for people just tell you that all the fucking time. That they know how to do it, they know all the answers, and those are exactly the people that don't improve. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You don't know the answers. Watch nobody, out for them. Nobody ever knows the answers. Yep. You are just slightly better at some... At not something. You're just slightly, yeah, you know, like, farther along on that path. Yep. No. It's good. And if you want to be a real... <laughs> If you want to be a real abstract artist, then you will go through that whole goddamn path so you can actually see the world and, and understand the world. Yeah. Instead of just pulling of shit just... out your ass. And I fucking know when you're doing it. Right. <laughs> you guys, you want to draw a decorative a... color pencil eye where you see the earth in the pupil, it doesn't <laughs> fucking mean anything to me. <laughs> Even worse is when it's like a black hole. Like there's so. <laughs> there's just a stab uh, in the eye. It's, it's a quasar. Oh, the Actually, other wouldn't thing, it be a blazar if it's whatever. facing towards you? What the fuck ever. So, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, uh, we touched on this before, is being paid an exposure. So you can, <laughs> if you want, because I'll, I'll probably put this one out more recently, because I think this is more prevalent than some of the other ones. If if you want, you can go onto my DeviantArt page, which is alradek at deviantart.com, and, or dot deviantart.com. Uh, if you want to go on there and look at my most recent comments that are on the front of my page, you can see somebody who has advertised for a horror zine. <laughs> and um, the yeah. person more or less on the front of their page, like, it, they have some helpful articles in there. For more or less, it's just this person picks their very best, and I'm using excessive air quotes, deviant art people to kind of sponge off of. So they put some of your artwork on there, which most of the time that's perfectly fine. People want to put your artwork on there and credit you, more power to you. Good for you. Yay, exposure. Um, but then she had something on the front saying, if you're a, an author and you really want to commission somebody, really consider the people in this zine, because these people care more about exposure than money. And that is... Uh, I, I literally told him, I can't do this because of that. I, I cannot endorse it. That is terrible. That yeah. is so awful. She just, fuck you. <laughs> I wanted to give the most adult fuck you I could. So I'm like, um, I'm actually not interested in this because uh, being paid in exposure is bullshit. And trust me, like, I had I had the cover to Asimov Science Fiction Magazine, which is in magazines, like, fucking everywhere. Like, literally everywhere. Grocery and I didn't get stores? a single... Grocery stores, there you go, <laughs> Magazine. Um, <laughs> they also had a pronunciation of how to pronounce zine. That's fantastic. Ugh, yeah. But yeah, it was it was everywhere, and I literally didn't get a single gig out of it. Yep. Trust me, nothing gives you exposure. Okay, there's a few things that give you exposure. Only but... you can give your self exposure by <laughs> by working hard and and applying Only you yourself can expose and yourself. meeting new people. Yeah. <laughs> Only you can streak out naked with your art. Being yeah. Just, just to open a open a trench coat <laughs> and just have your artwork just like strapped to your body, and then just run. Yeah, you'll learn different techniques for running. The police and might buy something off of you. you know, yeah. When well, you're never might, be tackled. Uh, they might tase naked. you and you might die. <laughs> you no. gotta be careful. Make sure you have a canvas where they're gonna tase you and you can present it as its own art piece. Or make sure... And you can call that, it... Yeah. Uh, don't tase me, bro. <laughs> and then it's a... Or a... Cess, what, what is that? Like, this is not a cigar. And it's just a... This is not a taser. And uh, then just have a... Si es no... <laughs> ne, ne se pa un cigar. taser mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you okay, go. that's so, an art joke. Yeah, don't ever do things with exposure. Yeah, that's... just just do stuff yourself. Like if you like drawing dragons, and someone's like, "Well, can you draw me an octopus for exposure?" Just keep fucking drawing dragons. Yeah. That person will get you nothing except misery. Don't Maybe ever draw... also 
Also, don't ever lower your prices because someone's like, oh, commission if you drop your prices to $20. Don't tell, do that. Tell, tell them that you'll only do that if they can go back to the 1970s. I still have a guy that he, he tells me that all the time. Yeah. If you dropped your price a little bit, I might be able to commission tell you. Tell them to well, I'm not having any lack clock. of commission, so yeah. when that happens, I'll let you know. When a gallon of gasoline is a dollar, sure. It almost was. When when a when the cauliflower is a dollar, sure, and not four dollars. Whatever. Okay, so <laughs> I've been Andrew Radick. Now I'm Kristen Plusko. And um Stay cool this summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say no to forest fires. Say no to abstract art.